I'm Courtney Deegan and this is The Pricing on the Cake. Welcome to episode eight of The Pricing on the Cake, the podcast that's all about growing a profitable business confidently. If you're a woman in business who wants to earn more and grow a fulfilling business, then this is the show for you. Today on the show, I'm going to be talking to you about discounts. This is a really, really common topic that comes up all the time. In fact, I just got off an, a power hour with the fabulous Lauren Tuck in her group, the Ra Ra Spirit Team. One of the questions that came up was around discounts. Now, it's been a probably a good month or two since I've actually been asked about discounts and it prompted me to, you know, create an episode on the podcast around it because it is something that a lot of people wonder about. It's very natural to wonder about it. A lot of people tend to make a lot of pricing decisions, you know, just sort of testing the waters, seeing what works, what doesn't, um, you know, without necessarily having the background knowledge that they need in order to make really, really good decisions based on what's best for their business. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. I'm going to share with you, not whether you should or shouldn't use discounts, but more about how you should think about them. The first thing I want to say about discounts is that they are not inherently evil or bad, right? It's not a totally disastrous thing if you are using them in and of themselves. Having said that, it may be that they are not the right thing for your business or maybe what you're using them for or the way that you're using them or communicating about them could be having the kind of impact that you don't want to have. What's really, really important, first of all, is to understand how discounts actually impact your customers, how it affects how they think about you and your products or your services. The very word itself means to actually, you know, discount something like to reduce its value. Whenever you use that word, you actually detract the perceived value of your product or service. This means then that people will have a lower willingness to pay for something. This also sets up things like a reference price or expectations. The other thing that discounts do is that it creates learned behavior. You know, like I said just then, it creates an expectation. If you offer a discount, especially if you do it multiple times, people are going to learn from that. You're essentially teaching people to wait for a discount because they don't have to pay full price. They can just wait for you to discount and then they will buy something. This is one of the most common ways that people fall into a trap where customers only buy when they have a sale. And that's not a position you want to be in because it is a race to the bottom very quickly. You end up having a brand reputation and a perceived brand quality that gets lower and lower and lower, and it can be very dangerous and even fatal for your business to be in that kind of position. The thing that I like to try to encourage people to do is to think more strategically about why they're doing a discount, right? You don't want to just offer a discount just in the hopes of getting more people. You want to think a bit more than that and think about, you know, what is this going to do in the short term? What is this going to do in the long term? How is this going to impact how my customers see my other products that I'm not discounting right now? Am I thinking about that? How am I going to market it? Am I marketing this to a particular subset of my target market rather than to just everyone in my target market? There are a lot of questions and a lot of things to go through that are really important to bear in mind. If you offer a discount just blatantly generally to everyone that you're you know, serving, everyone that you're communicating to online, you will have some people who will really appreciate it because they're very price sensitive and they'll buy from you. And then you'll have other people who, you know, have a really high willingness to pay and they might actually think, you know, why are they discounting? Is something wrong? Because remember too, your pricing tells a story. And so if you all of a sudden start to lower your prices, you're discounting or you're discounting frequently, some people will have that knee jerk reaction of, oh, there must be something wrong with it. Or maybe enough people aren't buying, right? People, people's brains will come up with a story. Whenever we uh, encounter a price, our brain comes up with a story about what, uh, what the value of that product is, what the quality is going to be like. We set up expectations of what to think. We also then compare it to other things that are around. So another good thing to be aware of is are other people in your industry, you know, other competitors, are they also discounting? That's a really good thing to be aware of because if you are offering a lot of discounts or your prices are much lower than your competition, your customer is going to see that and they're going to notice. Okay, especially if you have a lot of competition, your customers are going to be making a buying decision known as a which one decision. In this circumstance, they have more choice, they have more power, and therefore their price, um, their willingness to pay is lower, their price sensitivity is higher. You don't have a lot of power here. And discounting is going to actually negatively affect that. 
I want to talk to you now about language and the psychological influence of discounts and how to how to implement discounts in a really effective and really positive way instead. A lot of the time people will offer a discount like, you know, 10% off this product, right? And so when you do that, you're saying you're using the word discount, which you know reduces the perceived quality of it. You're also using a number, you're using the number 10. Now the 10, 10 out of 100, 10 is much less than 100. And so that comes off as a low perceived quality as well. One thing you can say instead, and I got this from Ed Kless from the Soul of Enterprise podcast, is you can say, you know, rather than having 10% off this product, you say you get the preferred price of 90% of the full price. There's a couple of things going on here. Number one, the word preferred. The word preferred makes someone feel special, makes them feel exclusive, right? And people love feeling that. That activates a bit of the reciprocity effect, right? Where you've given them something, okay? You're, you're rewarding them with, you know, acknowledgement of their loyalty. The other thing that's happening is you're using the number 90. Now, 90 out of 100 is so much bigger than 10. When you use a number like 90, it feels like they're getting so much more. Because they're getting so much more, they're going to end up valuing that thing so much more. They're going to have a higher willingness to pay. They'll end up also most likely having a higher uh, satisfaction from that product or that service as well. So that's another really good thing to consider is the language that you're actually using. Also, I'm very aware for those of you watching the YouTube version of this that I am in a, in a different location today. Uh, I'm working out of the office and this time I have a swivel chair and it's actually, it's actually a lot of fun. There are a couple of ways to know whether discounts would suit the kind of business you're in or not. If you're offering something that you want to be perceived as high quality, high value or premium service or luxury, then I would never use the word discount. I would just eradicate it. Things like special as well uh, is also off the table, special and discount. I just don't, it doesn't fit. It doesn't suit, especially given the kinds of customers that you are trying to sell to. They have a high perceived value and they have a high willingness to pay and they want that, right? Being able to pay that much, although obviously they'll still want to pay as little as possible, being able to pay that much makes them feel good about themselves, gives them that sense of they're buying something that's scarce, it's exclusive, you know, they and only a few other people have it. That's why luxury brands are so profitable because humans love like feeling like they have something that's rare, right? That's why, you know, really nice cars, really nice jewelry, really nice clothes are really expensive, but they're also really profitable companies. The other trap to be aware of with discounts is that a lot of people will tend to use discounts as a way to just get more volume, right? And they'll say, you know, I'll just discount it, I'll charge less, and then I'll just make up my revenue in volume. If you are a solo business owner, and especially if you are a service-based business owner, this is a very dangerous thing to do because making things up in volume is something that a mass producing product selling company can do right? They have millions in capital behind them. They have machines that just pump out product after product after product. You are not a machine. You are a human. You have a very finite amount of energy, attention, resources, money, time. All of those things are extremely valuable. It is not a volume thing that you can count on. Every time I see business owners take this approach, especially people who, you know, try to do a lot of uh, little tasks with a lot of clients, people like VAs, you know, other admins, um, bookkeepers, graphic designers, they take on so many people. They have so many people that they're talking to. And each one of those people takes up a certain amount of your mental and economic capacity that they end up burning out much faster. They don't even earn as much money, but they're working so much harder than they ever have before. It's a very, very dangerous place to be. A better approach to take is to think about the kind of quality and brand reputation you want to have. Do some research, talk to your customers, find out what their willingness to pay is, find out what their, their value drivers are, find out what's important to them. Charge your prices as, as best you can around what your customers are willing to pay, but also keeping in mind things like the kind of business that you want to have in the future. Do you want to have staff? Do you want to have machinery? Do you want to have better computers, better printers? You know, do you want to be able to rent an office? Things like that. Your pricing today should reflect the kinds of the kind of business that you want to have tomorrow. There are costs that your business will have tomorrow, next year, five years from now that you can't afford today because your prices won't cover it. And that's something that you need to think about now. And discounting will only slow that process down. That's not to say, again, that discounts are bad, but it will slow that process down. 
every time you have a discount, you are cutting into the money that you earn. That is money that represents the value that you give to people. That's something that you have more than earned. And when it comes to pricing, it should be win-win, right? It shouldn't be a case of, uh, you know, you have to discount in order to get paid what you're worth or even less than what you're worth. That isn't fair to you. I'd really like you to now, you know, or sometime today, sit down even just for five or 10 minutes and think about your pricing and think about this. Is my pricing fair to me? And let that sit with you. Is my pricing fair to me? Based on the work you do, based on the value you provide, based on the way that people's lives and businesses are changed after they work with you, is the pricing you have now fair to you? If the answer is no, then I would re strongly recommend not offering discounts. Instead, I would strongly encourage you to increase your prices, talk to your customers first, talk to them about the value you provide and the prices that you have and how you can come up with prices that better reflect the value that you provide. So to sum things up, discounting is not a bad thing. It is very important to be strategic about them, to plan out what they're going to do for your business, both short-term and long-term. It is important to be aware of how it impacts your customers behaviorally and psychologically. And most importantly, you need to make sure that your pricing is fair to you as well as to your customers. Of course, there's a lot more to it than that in terms of, you know, person to person, business to business. What suits you and your business is going to be totally different to another business. And the specifics are things that I can't offer here, but the things that I've mentioned in this podcast and in this video are all of the general things that are super important for you to be aware of in order to make better decisions around things like discounts discounting and also your prices in general. So I hope that that's been helpful. If it has, please leave a comment and let me know what's one action you're going to take after watching this video or let me know what your key takeaway was. Remember, you can also access more free resources in my Facebook group at The Pricing on the Cake. Also, there's my blog at CourtneyDegan.com. If you need to email me at any time, you can reach me at Courtney at CourtneyDegan.com. And that is all for me today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.